guys. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Terrific. We spent a half an hour down here. I'll never be able to straighten my leg again. And for what? Oh, hi. All right, we didn't surprise you at all, right? Well, when a fella gets to be my age. All right, 34 now. There's no fooling you. Jaded, old bastard. Sit, sit yourself down. What am I thinking of? Sit, I'll get a blanket for your legs. Here you go, Willem. Axel, now I said no presents. Oh, well, if you insist, I'll just... Give me that. <laughs> oh, where did you get this wrapping paper? Okay. This gets saved. <gasps> a bottle of whiskey is practically full. It's completely <laughs> full. You son of a bitch, practically full. Anyway, why'd you come up so early? I've still got a shower and the wall bread's coming over. Uh, I've got an assignment tonight. Couldn't get out of it. Really, what's opening? Well, let's see here. At the theater now, the world premiere of Drums Along the Wabash. Catchy title. I'm looking forward to it. I'll watch for your review. Oh, you want to read it now? Here's your card. We thought you'd be tired. We came up to get things started. You know, straighten up a little, make the salad. Inflate all the whoopee cushions. All of the niceties, right? That's right. Talking now to Will Covet, Terre Haute, Indiana's most promising young middle-aged architect. Share with our radio family, sir, your favorite sexual position. Third from the top, I guess. Uh-huh. <laughs> Did you read your card yet? What's this? Three bean salad. I thought we'd eat in here, and then if it gets too crowded, we can spill out on the Well, floor. uh, Pansy. What? Oh. Did you do any of this? Me? Prepare food? Right, babe, you eat my food, you'll spill out onto the porch. <laughs> spill out onto the carpet. <laughs> Happy birthday, eight-year-old. Pretty cruel, Tansy. Keep reading. Now that you are 10. <laughs> All right, I get it. Two, three, five. Couldn't find one that said 34, so I got six. Six that added up, up right. <laughs> God, I'm six little kids. Right, Tansy, you think you made enough macaroni salad? Hey, what meat meathead? Now I know why there's that nationwide macaroni shortage. <laughs> Terrible thing. I passed two little brownie scouts outside crying their eyes out because they didn't have anything to make their necklaces out of. <laughs> Tansy, this really is nice. Isn't that a nice little poem? I just came across it and it made me think of oh, you. Come here. Thank you, sweetie. Perfectly all right. Oh, hell. Oh, well, I guess you cheered him up. All right, I'm doing my best, okay? And, uh, what's this? Never mind. One more little endearment to make it that much harder on him when you're gone? That wasn't my intention. Come on. You know you're not doing the guy any favors with that kind of stuff. I'm gonna hate watching a perfectly good landlord walking around with his gut scrambled just because some little blue-eyed patootie decided to toss him an extra couple of macaroons before she hit the road. Axel! He used to be a pretty good laugher. I don't know if you remember. It's his birthday. So give him a tie, or else give him what he really wants. I mean, the guy's 34, for God's sake. He needs someone to look after him in his dotage. Not me. Come on, does Washington really need one more weather girl? Ax, I am leaving here one week from tomorrow, and nothing... Hey, hey. Look, I know how this must seem to you, like the parody of a new woman casting off her chains to go become the Washington weather girl. I didn't say that. You put it awfully well, but I didn't say that. And, all right, so maybe it's not the loftiest goal ever pursued by womankind or anything, but to me, it happens to be that damn thing. That one chance that comes along in your life that you just got to grab Axel. Like, you know, and then before you know it, your eyes glaze over, and whatever, whoever you gave it up for, you start to resent. And I'm not going to do that to Willem. Oh, some favor you're doing him. Willem, there's something bigger than us, a wonderful something called meteorology. Oh, Willem will be all right. Do you think so? He's told me so. What does he know? Does he know you come up here every day and untangle this place? He's just been busy with his hotel, and he needed someone to... Oh, so what? When you're gone, he won't still need someone? Oh, I should give up my career to shell the man's books. All right, so he's a little messy. I mean, if that's what you don't like about the there's guy, then I There's nothing I don't like. Willem is wonderful. He's talented. He's the gentlest man I've ever known. He could use a little gumption, I think. But... Oh, gumption. What is that? What is gumption, exactly? Just something people have. I don't think so. Not anymore. 
I think they found the cure. It's kind of like neuralgia. I mean, who was the last person you ever heard of having gumption? Marjorie Maine, right? All right. All right, so now what? Willem can't be perfect for you without gumption? No. Please, let him be imperfect. Somebody perfect right now would really louse things up. Willem's got his hotel, and I've got my weather girl. So that's that. And besides, here I am, fresh out of one relationship. Fresh? Fresh? It's been two years, Tansy. You call that fresh? Well... I'll remember never to send you out for seafood. Fresh enough. <laughs> Come on. So you once came close to marrying a bastard. Interesting bastard, I'll tell you that. Interesting to the vice squad, maybe. He was gifted. He could make people laugh. Too many appetites. That was his problem. Cravings for things. Evil things. Booze. Dope. People in show business. Candy strikes. I could have put up with all that, I think. That hunger, that wasn't really the problem. I never liked the man. That, I think, was the problem. If you didn't like him, there wasn't much hope for me, was there? Burn, you goddamn trees, burn! <laughs> but I'll tell you something. He may not deserve it, and I know he doesn't want it, but I'd like him to know he'll be missed, too. Jack! Excuse me a minute, will you, honey? Jack! Jack Daniels! How the hell you been, babe? <laughs> Have you had anything to eat? No? Huh. Well, try some of my stomach lining. <laughs> he was a stranger, and I took him in. You're a hard man, actually. Really? Am I good to find? Do you remember something I asked you the other night at the Halloween party? The Halloween party? That was you? I asked you. You look just like Petunia Piggy. I asked you if you'd ever done an anonymous favor. Do you remember that? Sure. It cut me to the quick, too. Do you remember what your answer was? It made me feel like the Marquis de Sade or said, Scrooge or Nixon you said or someone. an anonymous favor? Well, what would be in it for me? Sure. So? So I guess all I'm saying is, creep, that I'd feel a lot better about leaving here if for just once, I could see you go crazy and do something for someone. Not this bloke. A villain I be, and a villain I'll stay. You're not a villain, either. You are a little self-destructive and possibly a bit pretentious, but I... Pretentious? Well, yes. Pretentious, moi? Where did I see that? Reader's Digest, right? My God, it's frightening. How could I have ever thought of taking up with a woman who knew all my sources? It was only because you lived in the next apartment, I think. You were the only vice within walking distance. <laughs> oh, I didn't check my messages. Oh. Hello, hello, this is Willie Hubbard, November 4th. Hope you had a happy Halloween. Uh, we're having a birthday sort of thing here tonight after supper, so drop by if you can. No presents, please. Uh, I'll be out most of the day. You shouldn't say that, you know. But I shouldn't what? be back. That you're six. out. That's an invitation here, to come thieves. Come on in. Oh. Doors always open. If you want to leave a message, wait till you <laughs> Yeah, this is Wink. Hey, big fella. I got hung up at the zoo with Pinky and the kids, and we may not make it. But happy birthday. See ya. Wink and Pinky. Hey, son. This is Red Graham again. Talk to me some more about this Alexandria thing, will you? I can't see anybody else but you for that job, and I think maybe we can sweeten the deal for you. Call me at the office or leave word with Doreen, all right? Appreciate it. Happy birthday. Bye-bye. Well, I'll call him back, I guess. I surely hate phones. Oh, that was a job offer? Yeah, this guy's been calling me for three days. He wants me to do some of, uh, some project for me. You know, he saw some of my Colonial Village stuff, and now he wants me to do something just like it for him. It's a... Nothing housing development. Big yawn. Oh, we'll touch you. <laughs> you know, housing developments that I can always get, it's, it's just that... They're not art. Well, sort of. Well, anyway, the Regency keeps me here another year, and this Red Graham wants me in Alexandria next month. Alexandria? So... Alexandria, Virginia? That's right across the river from D.C., you know. Washington? Mm hmm What? Nothing. Hi, I'll be out your part of the country this afternoon with Clelia and Thor picking apples. Clelia says it's supposed to strengthen our family bond. The family that picks together <coughs> sticks together. So I'll have them with me when I come by. If you've done those new exteriors, I'd like to take a look at them. Yes, this is Ken Paul. Okay. I was told Axel Hammond could be reached here. If I don't hear from him by 7, tell him I'll proceed as directed. 
Thanks, and happy birthday, whoever you are. Thank you. Who is that? Oh, one of the Carney folk. Your new friend? Yeah, Kemp Hall. Ever heard of him? Don't think so. He's the damnedest character man I've ever seen. Proceed as directed. What was all that about? You don't want to know. Fine. Hi, Willie Worm. Dean the Bean here. Dipstick. Four things. I just found your checkbook under my desk. I don't know when you lost it. Two, I can't come over tonight. But I'll get your checkbook to you tomorrow. Three, I did have a happy Halloween. Thanks much, Lee. And four, happy birthday. Goodbye. Willum Cupboard? Uh, hi. This is Rick Stedman on the phone. Stedman, Rick Stedman. You said if I was ever over by you, I should come for a visit. And so... Here I am. This so is Rick Stedman. When you said happy Halloween, was was this a happy Halloween party tonight or what? I mean, are we supposed to dress up all nutty and all? Wait, wait, Let where are go. you? A Halloween party a few days late. He didn't leave a number. Tansy, what? this is Rick Stedman. Uh, who's Rick Stedman? From Nam, remember? The guy from the war? You're a good Samaritan. Yeah, I finally get to meet him. Someone you haven't seen since the army? No, I've never seen him ever. Well, this, well, I told you how I got my Purple Heart, didn't I? Well, I remember you saying you were wounded in the line of duty. Sort of. Well, you were a draftsman, right? Right, the safest job in the army. I was a draftsman in the Quartermaster Corps. I was sent to Nam to draw pictures. Fine, so I'm off the plane maybe 48 hours, in which time, never mind how, I had managed to get myself in the middle of a rice field in VC country. So I'm standing here in dress uniform in the middle of a rainstorm. My collapsible PX umbrella has totally collapsed. <laughs> and I'm trying to find a road on a map that's turned to malto meal in my hands. I'm so tired and disgusted, I forget to be scared. <laughs> and all I can think of are these stupid war movie quotes. And without even realizing it, you know, I started saying them out loud. And I remember saying, well, it's a damn dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. And then that's when I hear this sound, you know, this, this loud fluttering sound, like, like, like a plane caught on a bicycle wheel. It's an AK-47. <laughs> the next thing I know, I'm sitting in a puddle. And even though I can't see myself through the mud, I realize intuitively I've been shot <laughs> because there's all this great pain. And so I'm thinking, you know, I, I've got to let them know I'm a draftsman, right? Somehow so that they won't kill me. And then, you know, I'm, I'm puzzled. I'm trying to think, what's the universal sign for draftsmen? <laughs> and that's when I pass out. The next thing I know, I wake up in a naval hospital in Japan. Purple Heart, honorable discharge, and I'm going home. So what had happened? This guy, Rick Stedman, uh, he was just a poor fellow himself, wounded. When he saw me, and you know, he picked me up, and he dragged me back through the jungle, a mile and a half to his base camp. He refused medical attention until I had gotten everything I needed. <laughs> yep, that's brave. So here I am, legs and all, thanks to him. And you never met? No, not until tonight. <laughs> we were both shipped back right away, but I got his address and records. I wrote him, he wrote back. Uh, he works in a factory somewhere in Wisconsin, a town with an Indian name, I can't really remember. Silver Heels? What? Nothing. Oh, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, I, Silver Heels, Tonto, right. <laughs> so I told him, as long as I was alive, he'd have someone on this earth who would do anything for him. I mean it, money, a place to stay, absolutely anything. Of course. But lately we've been out of touch, just Christmas cards and things. But gee, Rick Stedman. If this is a scam to wheedle me out of my last bottle of Dom Perignon, you've just done it. I'll be right back. Pretty excited, huh, kid? Well, yeah. And you know, I... I'm really glad you could be here for this, Tansy. Yeah, me too. Tansy? I, I know. I know. I've been saving this for a special occasion, but I figured since this was a... But lo, the angel of death had come among us. Rick! What if that's Rick? What do we do? Let's make sure he'll remember. Uh, lay down on the floor and I'll cover your leg with shrimp sauce. Very funny, I mean it. <laughs> it's Mr. Wallace. Oh, uh... Hi, right, come on up, come on up. Here, these are for you. Oh, thanks. You ought to be able to, be able to eat them in a few days. How are you, Sammy? Tansy. Oh, Tansy. 
Thanks for getting you met. Uh, Axel, this is the man that's letting me design this hotel. Ah, I've seen you on the finance page. Warnock Walgrave, the self-made man, rags to riches. Tiki. A uh, pardon? Tiki. Call me Tiki. Well, I'd rather swallow glass, but if you insist. <laughs> Gumbo. Just call me Gumbo. Don't you dare. Uh, dear, this is Willem. Uh, this is Pansy. Pansy. <laughs> and, uh, Gumbo? Axel. Axel. Right. <laughs> My wife, Lilia. Oh, yes. Now, what is it that you're involved in again? I work with slow learners. <laughs> And my son, Thor. Thor? Dad. What is it, son? I hate it here. No, you don't, son. Dad, I do too. <laughs> Axel. Sorry. I promise we have to go play with A.J. Moravik. Who? Please, A.J. Moravik, his little friend. He has a little friend named A.J. Moravik? Funny. All oh, Willem's friends have names like Winky and Pinky and Dean the Bean. <laughs> Doesn't that strike you as funny, Mr. Wa uh, I mean, take... <laughs> Funny, never done anything like this before. Oh, damn it, clearly he's done it again. Order, I'll get the bricks. Thor, come out of there! I'm going to break your arm! Tiki, if you treat him as an adult, he'll respond as an adult. Yeah, all right. Thor! Thor, come out of there, I'll give you 30 bucks! Tiki! Okay, I'll spare it. 30 bucks, son, that's five more than last time. Tiki, you're wrong with your money! Lilia, please! I'm here A for business and B for fun. I'm in no mood for psychology. <laughs> All right, son, 30 bucks, straight business deal. 50. What? Oh, $50 when I come out. Why, oh, you little blood sucker. <laughs> I'll see you in hell first! Ha <laughs> uh ha, -huh, mother. Can I take your coats or anything? All right, buddy. I can snowball just as well as you can. I'm going to enjoy myself out here with these real nice people and that great looking macaroni salad. I just hope there's stuff on there that's that much fun. There is! Ha <laughs> ha! Do you want to see it in the kitchen? Yeah, all right. I'll deal with you later, pal. You're a big, fat disappointment to me. I hope you know that. Come on, Chicky. Oh, damn, kid. President of General Motors someday. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie the robot's gonna self-destruct here. Yeah, it does that sometimes. I'll have to take it back in, I guess. Mm -hmm. Oh, so any word from... Uh, from little Damien? No, he's been pretty quiet. <laughs> well, I just hope his daddy liked my pictures. Ah, these are the new ones. Yeah. Let's have a seat. Huh. Less is more, huh? That's what the man says. What do you think? Well, I hate to be and I liked it better before, but I, I liked, liked it better, better before. before. Yeah, well, I've kept a few things. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah, the brick comes, will you? Sure. <laughs> Poster child for Planned Parenthood. <laughs> I suppose. It's just that Thor becomes so difficult sometimes, and then Tiki gets angry, and then angry with me. Sometimes it's all I can do to I know, I know. And then Thor becomes that much more difficult and whiny. Sometimes it's more than I can deal with these men. Ain't it the truth? Well, you're a blessing anyway. Oh, dear. I wonder if I could ask you. I wonder if you have anything. A uh, hanky. No. I wonder if you have anything I could break. What? Break? 
Yes, sometimes it's all that will help. It sounds silly, I suppose. Oh, no, no. Um, well, let's see. Anything in particular? A little saucer, something small. A little saucer. Um, <laughs> fine. Nothing expensive now I can do without. Don't be silly. I wouldn't want to have you sit here all night without anything to bring. I usually carry little woolworth saucers, but I seem to have used my last one at the orchard. Here, will this do? It's just a sauce dish. Oh, these are my favorites. <laughs> Sure. Is the cider supposed to be boiling all over and turning black and hard? The cider, oh God. That's all. So that's why the only thing that moves out of his mouth, I was wondering. But everything's under control. Let's just enjoy ourselves and have a good time. Okay, sure. out here in the woods. <laughs> no, that was just a joke. Yeah, well, he, it's not that common of a name, you know, Stedman. Well, Stedman granted, but not Rick Stedman. Listen, why don't you take yeah, I don't think I've even ever heard of another Rick Stedman. No, I, I guess me neither. Um, <laughs> oh, so then that was some sort of joke then, right? What? <laughs> Wait, why was I hiding? <laughs> I, I, I don't know, Rick. 
Well, if you don't know, then I guess I don't know. I mean, it's your house. <laughs> All right. Um, listen, why don't you take off your head and get comfortable? Thanks. It's not midnight yet, but what the hell? <laughs> Boy, it's hot in there, believe me. Oh, I'll bet. Real hot. Yeah, I'll bet. Midnight? Excuse me? What? Excuse me? <laughs> sure. Rick, hi, Tansy McGinnis. Uh, this is Axel Hammond and Warnock Walgrave. Tiki. What? Tiki. Call me Tiki. Oh, right, I'm sorry. Tiki Rick, Rick, Tiki. <laughs> Pleasure. So, what are you supposed to be? I'm a businessman. A businessman, yeah, that's good, that's good. And Cleelia Walgrave. Hi, what are you? I'm a teacher. <laughs> A teacher, right, with your hair all pulled back and all stooping all over. That's great. So, I guess I'm the only monster, huh? First they tried to sell me a pig, but I said I wasn't getting into no pig, even if it was the Queen of England. Oh, wait a second, Rick. Oh, so who was the guy answering the door? He was great. Who? Oh, you know the little guy, the little guy with the boxer shorts with the mouse printed oh, on him? Thor, it must have been Thor. Oh, Where would Thor have gotten mouse boxer shorts? Oh, those are Willem's. Willem has a pair like that. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> so, is there a judging or anything? What a judging? For the costumes. <laughs> Rick, it's okay, but this wasn't really supposed to be a costume party. Oh, great. Now he tells us. I mean, here Taki goes out and buys his funny business costume, and you probably spend all day getting dressed up like a little old ugly school teacher. And what happened? We get here and he says, no costumes. Great. It's, it's not important. Oh, Richard. sure, it's not important. You're not sitting around dressed up like a bunch of goofballs, right, Taki? Tiki. What? Tiki. My name is Tiki. Oh, OK. Tiki, right? Right what? Uh, Right, Tiki? No, no, I'm saying, what's the question? What question? <laughs> what question? Right. Right what? Taki? Tiki! Oh, uh, could I get out of this, do you think? What? Oh, sure. Mm. Good, I hate to stick you guys by yourself, but I'm wearing normal stuff under here, so I'm taking this off. And in the spring, when the cicada emerges from its... <laughs> Oh, boy. Who should I give this to? Here. In the closet, all right? You wouldn't want it to wrinkle. Right. Thanks. Uh, uh, that's better. Uh, Rick, you want to clean up or anything? Sure. Oops, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Pete. You're sorry. Well, that was certainly unexpected. Yes. That guy saved somebody's life. He really did. Saved Willem's life. He must have been trying to kill it. <laughs> we just got off to a kind of bad start, that's all. I'm sure he's probably fine. Fine? He thought my wife and I were in Halloween costumes. <laughs> you know, he was just a little confused, that's all. Here now, dinner's ready. Everybody in the kitchen. Consumer market research, we Axel. call it. See, I advise manufacturers which products they should eliminate as a result of poor consumer responses. Which is what? Well, take 32 flavors of ice cream, for instance. Well, 
31 flavors now. <laughs> they were losing products like crazy. Couldn't figure it. I talked them into eliminating their least popular flavor and bingo. And what was the flavor? Uh, let's see. A uh, berry. Barium crunch, I think they called it. It was sort of gray, stank quite a bit. And then there was Doc Johnson's marital age. Drama critic. Thing, but... Axel's a drama critic for the paper, really. Huh. What was all that about marketing? Lies, all lies. Axel's little tragic flaw. Huh. Oh, you knew he was kidding. Yeah, I had a pretty good idea. I thought so. <laughs> so what, then? You get to see all the shows for free? Uh, just the important ones. Ever see anything good? No. Axel tends to be a little embittered. See, he writes for the morning paper, so with his deadline, he always misses the last half hour of whatever he's reviewing. I mean, for all he knows, Hamlet gets the girl, Godot shows up, he really doesn't know. Isn't there some gal in town doing some Shakespeare thing with, or without any clothes on, right? Mm -hmm. Andrea Saint, what's her name? She does two hours of classic Shakespearean monologues unencumbered by clothing. Shakespeare in the Raw, I think they call it. It's called Shakespeare's Women. It happens to be very effective and very moving. So did you see her? Oh, yeah, I covered her opening, which is more than she can say. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say it. Ah, there he is. Well, show business. We have a daughter. You've met her with him. Jillian. Jillian, yes, and she's just 17 yet, but she can play this, uh, what, what, what is it called? The piano. No, 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 that piece she plays. Tchaikovsky's first piano concerto. No, 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 get this. She plays that on the piano, and she accompanies herself on the harp. Really? Mm -hmm. You uh -oh. should see her. She puts the harp right here, she reaches past it, she plays both things at once. Don't ask me how. It's the damnedest thing. <laughs> yeah, they all go through that. <laughs> Here's a plate for you. Thanks. Oh, what is this? Chicken paprikash. Oh, that's what I thought, because, uh, guess what? What? This is what I had for lunch. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, just, you know, take whatever you want. I mean, don't feel bad about leaving it or anything. OK. Is there a trash can anywhere? Here. I'll take it. Someone will want it later. Oh, sure. Pop it in the warmer. Could I interest you in something else? A hot dog would be easy, or I could even make spaghetti. Okay. Which? Spaghetti. Back in 10, 15 minutes. You need any help? No. <sighs> Boy, really something. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's lovely. Extremely. It's a good thing I had to go back in. I forgot to bring out the deviled eggs. Oh, well, they look oh. great, too. Oh. Mm. I love eggs. Thanks, For those Daddy. mom's recipes. Back in a minute. <sighs> you know, it's hard to believe. Just a little while ago, these were inside some birds. <laughs> Saying? I don't remember. Is everything okay? Sure. Okay. It's fine. Well. <laughs> so, Rick, fill us in. What have you been doing for however long it's been? Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Let's see. March 1974. <laughs> I get out of the army and I go back to the same place I used to work, same factory, and there are some changes, but everything's pretty much the same. Okay, granted. Okay. Okay. April. I move in with my brother, Bob, because he lives right near the factory. And, OK, I'm still working at the factory, remember? OK, then May. Jesus. Huh? Nothing. OK, May, 1974. I'm still working at the factory, and. Oh, look, Rick, uh, maybe you could give us, like, an overview of the whole time? For those of us who didn't bring our pajamas. Well, now, now what, was it, what was your job again? I remember you saying your factory made something interesting. Uh, well, what was it again? Chalk. Oh, chalk. Yeah, we make chalk. Uh-huh. Anything else or just? No, just the chalk. I see. Well, what's your part in the process? Inspector. Uh-huh. Well, what does the inspector do? Sit there and watch the chalk. <laughs> yeah, the load of
brothers put the chalk in the crates, the crates come through, and I check them out. Uh-huh. Now, what do you check them for? Is it broken pieces or color variations or what? No, I just make sure there is some. <laughs> some what? <laughs> some chalk in the crates. Oh, well, sometimes there's no chalk in the crates. There's always chalk in the crates. They're crates of chalk. I mean, we don't just send out some crates with no chalk in them. I mean, why would we do that? <laughs> well, what do you do? Do? Sit there and watch the chalk. Oh. Yeah, it sounds pretty neat, but it's not. <laughs> Uh, Rick, uh, do you still live with your brother? Yeah, my brother Bob, him and his wife, yeah. Is it a big place? Yeah, a couple of rooms, you know. Uh-huh. It's nice, though. Lately, they don't come around much. Lately, less and less. Oh, really? Where do they go? Not sure. You know, taking the kids for a walk, stuff like that. They've got kids. Oh, yeah. Little Bob Jr. and little Richard III. Oh, Richard III. <laughs> yeah, my father's name was Richard Stedman. I'm Richard Jr. It's a family name, Richard. Makes sense. It's not that unusual of a name in Wisconsin. Oh, look, I'm sorry. <laughs> so then are, are you here on vacation or what? Yeah. You know, I was just going to, you know, hang around the house. But then my brother Bob, I don't know how he did it, but he gave me, like, all this money, like mucho dinero, you know, and all these credit cards. And he said, why don't I just go anywhere I want to? So that's what I'm doing, just traveling around. Well, that, that was certainly generous of him. You know it. Especially since he hasn't got a job or anything. No? No, he's on that welfare. He used to work at the chalk factory, but he got laid off. Why? Well, I came back from the army and they gave me my old job back. Oh. It was the law. They had to. Too bad for old Bob, though, huh? Well, gee, I, I'm sure you help out with the household expenses, don't you? Mm, probably. Oh. Well, is, is Bob okay about it? Is he all right with the situation? Oh, sure. He has his interests and all, you know, like walking down by the river and trying to find places to hide things and listening to his headphones. And lately, he's got interested in guns. I'll bet. <laughs> Lots of stuff. And you were never married. Oh, no. The only time I ever proposed was way back. I still remember. We were all out on the playground at Reaver Hadley Elementary School. And we were playing. I don't think I ever told anybody this. What happened? Oh, well, there was this really pretty girl. You know, her name was Tina Pizzatis. And I still remember her. So one day, I gave her this little necklace, you know, that you make out of Cheerios. You know, you string the Cheerios together and you paint them. Anyway, I thought she'd like it, right? What did I know? So I gave her that and I asked her if she'd marry me. Oh. Yeah, and she was real nice and all, but she said she couldn't. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, and she told her folks. They got all mad. It was pretty dumb of me, I guess. Oh, no, it wasn't. You don't think so? No, it was very sweet. Really? Really. I mean, what the heck? She was only about eight or something. Well, how old were you? Thirty. <laughs> Sweet. Boy, her parents didn't think it was so sweet. Boy, they wanted to put me in jail. Oh. Yeah, but I'm glad you thought it was sweet. I'll have to remember that next time. Daddy. Tansy, do you think maybe I could have oh, another? Oh, sure. <laughs> what the hell was that? Well, I think she just needed a little time alone. Oh. So, how are the deviled eggs? Great! Oh. As a matter of fact, guess what? What? I'm full. <laughs> yep. Well. So, what do you want me to do with this? Go ahead. Huh, here, Tammy! Let me help you. He saved my life. I know, I know that. I can explain about the food. Pop it in the warmer, I guess. <laughs> Are you okay with that, Why, nothing. Oh, I thought I heard something. Just 
girl talk? <laughs> well, excuse me. Do you ever do that? Ever do impressions? See if you get this one. I got a million of them. Ha cha cha cha. Ha cha cha cha. Please. Jimmy Durani, before he died. Not okay, or how about this one? Harvey. But impression. Harvey, big white, white rabbit. Jimmy Stewart. Okay, how about this one? You dirty rat. I think we're going. No, wait, uh, game time. Huh? James Cagney. We're going to play a game, and then we're going to cut the cake. It's Willem's birthday. <laughs> Well... All right, everyone find a seat. You two act. Here we go. But, Tansy, uh... And don't worry. We're gonna play I Went on a Trip. Have you ever played that? I'm not sure. Oh, okay. yes. Well, the first person named something beginning with A. I went on a trip and I brought an apple, for instance. Oh, right, I played this. Good. All right, then the next person had something beginning with B, and so on. The list just keeps growing. Oh, yes, yes. I played this. Good, good. <laughs> All right, you want to start, Mr. Tiki? All right. <laughs> All right. I went on a trip, and I brought... An apple, what the hell? That's fine. And Amelia? I went on a trip, and I brought an apple and a basket. For the apples, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I went on a trip, and I brought an apple, a basket, and a cucumber. All right. I went on a trip, and I brought an apple, a basket, a cucumber and a duck. Okay. I went on a trip and I brought an apple, a basket, a cucumber, a duck, and a map of the area. Wait, wait. Uh, he loses rights. No. Rick, you can't. Huh? Maybe I didn't explain this. See, you have to name something beginning with E. Huh? See, A was apple, B was basket, C was cucumber. Oh! Uh, C? Yeah, well, we never played that way. We'd always just name things, you know, that we'd really bring on a trip. Oh. Like a map of the area. Oh, well, I... So then that would be okay, right? Well... <laughs> sure, sure. Oh, all right, sure. You just do it your way, and we'll keep going the way we want. Okay. Your turn, go. <laughs> um, what was my letter? F. Pretend that he did E. Right, uh, okay. I went on a trip and I brought an apple, a basket, a cucumber, a duck, a map of the area, and, um, oh, uh, a flagpole. A flagpole? On <laughs> a trip? Okay. Tiki? <laughs> I went on a trip, <laughs> and I brought an apple, a basket, a cucumber, a duck, a map of the area, a flagpole, and a gun. <laughs> remember all these things, but I can't. <laughs> okay. I went on a trip, and I brought an apple. Uh, a basket? I know. What is the point of this? If he's Why don't we play something out? It's a very good idea. Or we could just... Okay! This is called shoes and socks. So first, everybody take off your shoes and socks. Come on, everybody take off your shoes and socks. Uh, well, uh... Well, what, do you understand or do you want me to go back? What? <laughs> do you remember everything so far? Just remember, all you said was take off your shoes and socks. Oh, right, and uh, we'll need some bags. You got any paper bags? Rick, wait a second. What exactly are we doing here? Shoes and socks. Yeah? Shoes and socks, it's a game. Oh. Huh. Yeah, it's fun, you'll see. Okay, 
Uh, so we'll need some bags then. Uh, some, one big one for the shoes and socks and then some more for our heads. For our heads? I think it might be getting a little late. I mean, well, don't we want to play this game? I mean, we played your game. Don't we want to play my game? Okay, uh, look, we'll, we'll play the game. It'll be fun, probably. If you say so. Okay, then we'll need some bags. Got any paper bags? Grocery bags, all right. Great, no groceries in them, though. <laughs> okay, so up with the shoes and socks or stocking, or whatever. I've <sighs> <clears throat> been wearing these socks all day. <clears throat> they may be... Clelia! Well! How's that? Maybe i better do this in the kitchen. Yeah, good idea. He's <sighs> back. Great! Kenzie, uh, maybe you'd like to join me in what? To take off our... Oh, hey, good thinking. What am I supposed to do with these? Oh, here, these all go in a big bag. Careful, they cost me a hundred bucks. Pretty exciting. Who'll be shirts and who'll be skins? No, wait, before that. Before that? <laughs> here, we can do this. There we go. Uh, wait a minute, Rick, can you mix them up? Yeah, you're supposed to mix them up real good. Allow to marinate and serve hot. <laughs> no, before that. Just dump those in here. There you go. Mix, mix, mix. Okay, now, everybody gets one. Okay, now, now you take your bag, right? And you tear out an eye hole so you could just see out of one eye. Mind telling us why we're doing this? Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to see. Right. <laughs> okay, now, let's see here. Okay, all torn out? Okay, now, put the bag over your head and look out of the eye. Hey, all right, let's see. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, hold it a minute, damn it. I can't find my eye hole. Here, I'll help and you. My wife will help me. I can't see you. I'm right here. Oh, is that you? No, I think that's me. I'm right here, damn it. Oh, there you are. I can't find my eye hole. Well, I'm still. I am. Jackie, you made your eye hole way too high. What? Nobody's eye is way up there, sweetheart. Well, how the hell am I supposed to know where it goes? You think I punch out eye holes for my goddamn living? I don't think I can get this down far enough. Here, no problem. We'll just poke a new one. No! Here, wait. No, God damn it! Wait, one more time. Get away from me. <laughs> Are you okay? Okay, fine, fine. Who'd I hit? No, it's okay, what, really. Wait a minute, you I hit? No, it's all right. Oh. I say we end this game right now before someone else gets hurt. Second. Well, it's a really good game. No, we'll, we'll play the game. Uh, we'll just be careful, that's all. Oh. I don't want to play. I think my eye is swelling up in here. Uh, uh, really? Well, I mean, we didn't even give it a chance yet, you know? I mean, not mentioning any names, but somebody didn't even find his eye hole yet. <laughs> Just as a favor to me. Here's what we'll do. We'll just tear this down until you can see. There. How was that? I don't know. It looks kind of funny. Well, oh, God damn it. What the hell is this? A game or a goddamn duty contest? Jimmy? Okay. Uh, uh, what now? Get on with it. All right. So, uh, next what happens, um... But okay. get on with it. Okay. Uh, all right. Now what happens, I'm going to hide the shoes and socks somewhere in the room. So everybody has to close their eyes their eye and uh, put their fingers in their ears and turn all around and hum till I say shoes and socks real loud. I'm not doing this. <laughs> what, am I going too fast again? Mr. Walgrave. Put my fingers in my ears, turn around and hum. I don't need hotels. I come here, do a little business, and maybe have a little drink. And look at me. I'm standing here barefoot, half blind, my goddamn head in a bag, and now some shock inspector wants me to put my fingers in my ears, turn around and hum. Right, okay? <laughs> no! Mr. Walgrave. Uh, Tiki. Mr. Walgrave. Uh, Mr. Walgrave, please, if we could just get through this. Forget it, pal. I draw the line at homie. 
<laughs> well, uh, Rick, does everyone have to hum? Sure, I don't make these rules, you know. I'm not humming. <laughs> Mr. Waldgrave, listen. If you just go along with this, this one time, I promise I'll make it up to you. Uh, listen, I'll take all the molding off that hotel. What? Willem. No, this is something I've got to do. How about it, Mr. Walgrave? You mean you'll get rid of all that old-fashioned junk? Yeah. If I hum? Right. Uh, this is how they built the Taj Mahal? <laughs> all right, I'll hum. Oh, Willem. OK, uh, let's play some shoes and socks. Let's play tap. No, wait, before that. <laughs> OK, everybody ready? Close your eyes and no peeky. Go! I don't know. Keep pumping, keep pumping. Well, don't push it, pal. The Regency, Mr. Walker, mm -hmm. they think of the hotel. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, stop! Hmm? Stop? What is this stop business? I thought you were supposed to say shoes and socks. Oh, right, okay, shoes and socks! Well, we've stopped now. Um, okay, uh, all right. Hmm. Well, what now? Let's finish this. Okay, next what happens? I'm gonna start reading from any point in the Bible. And when I come to anything about legs or feet or shoes or socks, whoever hears it, yell shoes and socks. Real loud, okay? Oh, Rick, wait a second. Or maybe not shoes and socks, maybe just legs or feet. Now what? We need a Bible? Uh, yeah, we just open it up to anywhere and... Wait, wait, I'm not so sure that I have a Bible. You don't have a Bible? Well, what do you think this is, the Ramada? <laughs> no, Rick, I'm just sure that I don't. Why don't you have a Bible? I thought everybody has a Bible. Well, maybe it doesn't have to be a Bible. Maybe it could be a dictionary or a catalog or... No! It's got to be a Bible. Bible. <laughs> right. Why don't you have a Bible? Don't you believe in God? <laughs> Rick, it's, it's not that I don't believe in God. It's, it's just... Rick, this is not a discussion I want to get into with a bag over my head. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that, then. <laughs> well, the game's over. Sure. How would I know he didn't have a Bible? <laughs> it really kind of makes you think, you know. What do you mean, Rick? Well, I mean, if you believed in a power higher than yourself, we could have really had a great game of shoes and socks here tonight. <laughs> oh, Rick. Doesn't this make you ask yourself what else in life you might be missing? I'm missing my shoes and socks, you mind? Oh, right. I almost forgot. Looks like they landed in some water. Oh! Is this landed or something? Oh, for the love of me! <laughs> oh, where's the old smile, eh? We forgive you. Oh, oh well. Rick forgives me. He forgives me. Don't what have I done? Him. He must think I'm some kind of a, a, a godless a party pooper. Is that what I am, a godless party pooper? What you are is a good guy, and you're paying for it. Yeah, if I'm so good, then how come I feel Get so good? Get in here! Red my arm! Oh! Pansy, please, don't leave me. I've got to. I've just got to go to Washington. Uh, tonight? No, <laughs> not tonight. Oh, I just meant tonight. Tonight, oh. Uh, look, I'm sorry. I didn't mean Don't that. be sorry. I know how you feel. It's just I can't. Not tonight. If I stay tonight, I may never leave. I don't want to talk about this anymore, Willem.
maybe we'd like to do this in the kitchen, like in the sink. No? Here would be fine, too. Here, he's yours. Uh, no, mine. Thank you. Here are these. Yes. Uh, we can wash up in the kitchen. Do you want to? Stockings. Mine. <laughs> Kidding. They're mine? Yes. There's a couple stuck together. It's called pantyhose. Thank you. Here, are these yours? No, they're not. They gotta be. They're really not. Wait, these aren't mine. Uh, those are mine. So those are mine. Grab that gal and dance in line. All about let's say ain't that fine. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> A hundred bucks, right? A hundred bucks it cost me, and maybe an eye. Because we had to play your little army buddy's game. Before I go, you got any more surprises for me? Oh! Oh! oh. Wake up! All right, what the hell is going on? Uh, he's fine. He's just fainted. Fainted? He, he, you saw this happen? Yeah, right here. He so fainted. I... Right. So you put him in the closet. Well... <laughs> Why? Why would you do that? It looked like that's where he was headed. Oh. <laughs> I don't believe this. Get our coats! Oh, speak to me! Oh, where am I? Where am I? Oh, give us a break, Thor. Yeah. Oh, son. Oh. John. Marsha. Pancho. Bisco. Hey. Happy ending. Look. Rinty's laughing, too. <laughs> Is everybody around here gone nuts? Here, Peter, you take these. Oh, thank you. One will be fine. We're getting out of here right now. I'll see you in the morning, pal. Thank you. We had a wonderful time. Here we are. Well? <laughs> I should go, too. Oh, Tansy, please. Please don't go. Well, so where do I sleep? Good night, Willem. <laughs> Good night. The couch okay? I mean, don't, because that's fine by me. I spent like mucho time on these couches, let me tell you. One time over at my brother's, I slept on one for two years. <laughs> hey, that's one tired guy. This is Evanston Township High School Television, serving the ETHS community since 1956. stereo system in there, and then the only records he buys are 60 years old and chiseled out of granite. Hex, don't you realize that's one of the things that have kept the three of us together? We're all old-fashioned, all of us in different ways. Oh? 
Sure, look at us. Willem with his record. Me with my quaint little notions on gumption and so on that you chide me for. And you, well, there's another word you don't hear much these days. Curmudgeon. You acts are a classic curmudgeon. Classic curmudgeon, huh? Sounds like a murder weapon. And listen to the way we talk. The outdated slang we use, have you ever noticed that? Uh, die that bull outside. That's a bunch of malarkey. <laughs> Surprising Giants shut down Atlanta. I sure hope that's the sports page. It is, yes. <laughs> ah, who comes here? Is it both of them? Let's see. No, he's an old ship's alone for once. I wonder how he managed. Well, maybe he finally took my advice and showed old Rick the River from the top of the Mercantile Exchange Building. <laughs> Where's the Amityville horror still around? <laughs> oh, you don't want to talk about it. Uh. me or Rick Stedman as soon as you hear the tone. Thanks. Hey, boy, this is Red Graham again. Now, by this time, I realize you're not just aching to do this Alexandria job, but now let me try this out on you. Suppose I was to offer you... Testing one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Seems to be working fine. That's my new unlisted number. And you can call me there any time. Appreciate it. So long. Hello, this is Walgrave. Look, can you do me one thing as soon as you get in? There's a company in Lincoln... No been just six days to think. Just last week, the day before my birthday, Tansy was leaving me. The hotel design was being rejected and rejected. I found out I was being audited by the IRS. And in my folly, I imagined myself unhappy. <laughs> he follows me. He seems to have a, a unlimited time, unlimited funds. Brother Bob's life savings, I guess. He takes an interest in my work. He, he goes with me into town. I mean, the, uh, well, the other day, I had to take a commuter flight to St. Louis. That's where they're building the outside elevator for the Regency Hotel. And Rick asked if he could come along. So I said, OK, sure. You know, it's not going to be much fun, but all right. So Rick came along. He's sitting, me, he's sitting next to me on the plane. It's a DC-8, I think. Everything's fine. He's, wearing this little pilot's hat he bought at the airport, and he's leafing through a bound copy of Red Book. And then suddenly, you know, the plane starts shaking, and people are, in fact, starting to get alarmed. And do you know what happens in the middle of this? Rick stands up in the middle of the aisle, and he... Sh <sighs> he shouts, Urinate! You're an eight, or your kidneys would explode. And some people actually did. I mean, he was wearing that little pilot's hat and that white shirt and tie he always wears. And in a panic situation like that, well, naturally, the next thing we hear is the pilot coming back on saying, we just ran into a little turbulence back there, but we'll be landing in St. Louis in just one moment. 
And Rick sits back down, not realizing how many people wanted to murder him. <laughs> the only reason I think he escaped is because those who had the grounds didn't want to stand up. Unbelievable. <laughs> you know, it, it's a hundred things a day like that. Little things mostly, but they're starting to take their toll. I'm becoming irrational, snappish. I lie awake after the shooting socks party. It took me two days to square things with Walgrave. You know, I've become such an exhausted, cowering wreck at work, I've been agreeing to anything. Look at this. What's this? It's the Regency as of this morning. It's pretty stark. It looks like a huge air conditioner. <laughs> I just keep telling myself that it's mine, you know? It's got my name on it. And I guess that's something, I guess. I guess. <laughs> Look, if this Rick guy is ruining your career, as well as your life, you've just got to do something about it, that's all. I know. I can't, you know? I owe him too much. I owe him my life. Well, maybe he'll just drift away one of these days. I don't think so. He's been dropping hints about what he wants for Christmas. Oh, no. <laughs> What does he want? A Mr. Microphone. <laughs> All right, something has obviously got to be done here. What are the rules? We can't hurt his feelings, right? Right. All right, that makes it a little difficult. <laughs> Here's one idea. See what you think of this. All right, you know when you travel, you spend a lot of time in a foreign country? I mean, it can be fun, but it puts a hell of a strain on you. I mean, people are talking different. They've got strange customs. They remember different things. They eat weird things. Pretty soon, you're glad to get back home. And the more bizarre the place, the faster you get homesick. So what are you, what are you so, getting at? Just an idea. But I'm thinking, why couldn't we hit Rick with a dose of culture shock? I mean, what if we started confronting Rick with some rituals or memories or traditions that he's never seen before? Axel, how do we know what rituals and traditions Rick's never seen before? <laughs> we make them up. Oh, Ax. No, I think we could do this, really. Well, in, in other words, leave him out. No. Invite him to join in. If he gets fed up with us, hey, I bet that if we could find things to do that are strange or stupid or boring enough, well, I bet your money Rick will be on the next Amtrak back to Silver Heels. So, what do you think? I think it sounds really cowardly. Ah, I knew you'd like it. So, when do we rehearse? Axel, we're not going to rehearse. Willem, face it. The situation is desperate. It calls for something infantile. <laughs> Ken. That's why Ben can help us. Kemp would know some strange customs. He lives in a transient hotel in Indianapolis. Axel. Let me work on this. It could, it could be that anonymous favor that Tansy's always bugging me about. What? Well, Tansy's always saying, do somebody an anonymous favor. Well, this could be it. Of course, there's no way for it to be oh, anonymous. Oh, Axel. Now, the... What? Just surprised you remembered that. So then this would count with you, then, if Rick were to leave? Well, it's not for me to say. But? But, yes. If you could get Rick to leave Willem in peace with no hard feelings, yes, in my book that would count. Wait, uh, far be it from me to be the godless party pooper, but you all are going to have to forget this. Leave it for now. Just give me a call if you change your mind, OK? Well, Mr. Microphone, huh? I wonder what it'll ask for next Christmas. Oh. <laughs> I should go, too. I've got phoning to do. What's that, the Washington paper? The Post, yes. Look, for what it's worth, I feel like a real traitor. Oh, hey, don't worry about it. I do, leaving here Wednesday and leaving you here with him. Look, I'm going to say something to him. I promise. Good. I don't know what. And here he comes. He's walking down the street. Do you want me to stay? No, I'm fine. I'm doing my work. All right. Rick, Rick, sit down. Put down your tambourine. Uh, as you know, when, when two people are around each other a lot of the time, they can't help but influencing each other. And well, just as there's some chemistry in you that makes you like my company, there's some chemistry in me that well, it makes me want to scratch your face off. No. Uh, Rick. Rick, I'm not going to mince words here. It's time for you to leave. No, no, we needn't go into why. 
Let's just say it's something I've thought about for a long time and I've decided on. Now I realize, I, I realize I owe you my life. I acknowledge that. I realize that I promised you, that I promised you in writing, that as long as I was alive, you could come to me for anything. Do you know what this is? <laughs> it's a crossbow. I don't know. I hope he at least sends my things. Your things? Well, what well, things? My clothes, uh, my chemistry set. Wait a second. My chihuahua. Your chihuahua? Oh, yeah, you should see him. He's really lifelike. Uh, <laughs> where would Bob send your things? Here, right? Here? I mean, this is where I am, right? <laughs> oh, right. Uh. <laughs> Rick? Rick, um... What? There's something I have to say. I have to... Here goes. Now, Rick, you're here, and I'm here. Are you still with me? I'm a little bit lost. <laughs> All I said was, you're here, and I'm here. Oh. <laughs> Now, as you know, when two people are around each other a lot of the time, they can begin to affect each other in very different ways, affect each other's ability to function. You still with me? You're here and I'm here? Right. Uh, so, so there are these... So what we're talking about here really is it's personality, isn't it? I mean, I know there's some things about me that some people can't deal with. I'm sloppy. I, I lose things. I'm always getting lost. Some people just can't deal with that. But it's not their fault. It's, it's not my fault. It's personality. Do you see what I'm driving at? All right. OK. So there are these character traits. And um, well, let's just say, that, just out of curiosity, what if someone were to say to you something like, Rick, get out of here and don't ever come back. I mean, something like that. Do you think if you stood back, I mean, I know it would be hard, but do you think if you stood back, you could see what might lead someone to say something like that to you? Sure. Oh, that's great. Oh, sure. Uh, like if he hated me because I believed in God. What? <laughs> or, or, or believed in God. Or maybe he hates people because they work in a factory and my hands are all rough and stained with honest chalk. Wait, Rick, no decent <laughs> person would Or, or maybe he hates people because they were in the army and he hates people with purple hearts. Oh, God. What? <laughs> oh, okay. Rick, what would you say are the main differences between you and me? None. You mean you and I are? The same. Sure. <laughs> Rick, <laughs> do you know what this is? It's a T-square, and I've got to get back to work. Okay, that was fun. <laughs> Boy. 
You smoke cigarettes? Yeah. Since when? Since the airport. <laughs> oh, hey, that reminds me. I bet you don't know what... Oh, hey, I bet you don't think I don't know what you're looking for, right? What? <laughs> Wait, don't even answer that. <laughs> answer what? Or you want to guess? Guess what? Huh? Guess what? <laughs> I give up. <laughs> no, I, I got one for you. You know your picture of that hotel? Wait, Rick, that, that's exactly what I was looking for. I know, because he said you were afraid he'd like, might be missing oh, wait, something. Wait, Rick, now I may have said that. Yeah. If you've seen that, that's my final color rendering. I know, I know, I know. So guess what I did? This morning, I took it out. Rick. And I held it up to the light. <laughs> and I looked at it this way for a while. And then I looked at it this way Rick, for a while. don't tell me. And then I looked at it this way again. Oh, and Rick. you know what I finally realized it needed? It's so simple! <laughs> A chimney! <laughs> no, no, not there. That was just a goof. But see right here? <laughs> Remember, here, look. <laughs> See? I mean, I, I, I don't know where I got the idea. God, I guess. <laughs> uh, I don't know what to say. I mean, that's okay. But so, what would you do now? I mean, if, uh, oh, you were me. What? I mean, could you show me the ropes in that? Huh? I mean, wait a minute. We could be partners! <laughs> oh, oh, oh God. God! You broke the pen! Oh, the pencil! Hey, you're bleeding! <laughs> hey, let me look at Stop. that! Ow! Hey, wait, wait! No, I know just the thing for that. Sit down! Rick, I don't care about it. Now. It's my mother's kitchen remedy. You just rub it into the cut. I'll wait, Rick, I'm done. Please, sit there. I'll be in the kitchen, heating up the salt. <laughs> Heating up the salt! Oh. Hello? Ax? Hey, babe, how you when, doing? When do we rehearse? Oh, how about tonight? How about tonight? <laughs> message, you can leave it when you hear the tone. Thanks. Morning, son. This is Red. Now, I wouldn't want you to think I was calling for any reason. No. <laughs> I just like getting on your tape every morning. You know, that and the little OJ is what it takes to get me started these days. <laughs> All righty. I'll just call you again first thing tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Coverage Walgrave. I just personally called your draftsman for a floor plan, and he says he can't work without specifications. Nobody around here has seen you for days. Where the hell are you, and what are you doing? Hey, Willow, Dean the Bean here. Hey, I still got your checkbook. You want it? Hi, Ms. McGinnis. Kemp, I forgot you were still on. Always on, Miss McGinnis, always on. Uh-huh. By the way, in case nobody bothers to thank you for all your help, However, this hair-brained thing turns out. Thanks. Uh, tell me, Miss McGinnis. Yes? What do you look like? Oh, well, what would you guess I looked like? Well, uh, just going by the voice, are you small? Do you live in a tree? And uh, are you inordinately fond of nuts? Look, you, I can pull your plug, you know. Oh, God. Oh, God. Stop. <laughs> So, how are we doing up here? Oh, what's this? Oh, this. I may not get a chance to see. See you later on tonight, Kemp and I are going. Ah, Kemp, are you still with us? Sir. Ah, we're going to the dedication of the new Terre Haute Arts Pavilion. Arts Pavilion? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they say it's quite beautiful. They say it's built entirely out of creosote. <laughs> yes. Ah, who's this? Is this our boy? Let's go. <coughs> Sorry, I'm late. Oh, they just come on to the clinic. I thought they'd never get to me. But they did. Ah, did they get out all the salts? Most of it. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> ah, 
Scott Camp is with us again, I suspect to give us his St. Crispin's Day speech. Hi, Camp. Hi. Uh, forgive me for not rising. Oh, that's all right. Um, look, Rick's not here. His car's outside. Not yet. Uh, did you get everything set up? Oh, yes. I told him we were having a traditional Terre Haute dinner. Good, good. Oh, uh, Tansy, you're making a... Uh, a uh, whoopee? What? No. Uh, making out. Making believe. No. Uh, making tracks. Making do. This is kind of fun. <laughs> Make, making tea. Ah, tea. That's the word. Yes, I'm for. making the tea. Don't worry. Good, good. Are you all right? Oh, me? Yeah, I'm just a little nervous. Teapot? Will you shut up? <laughs> nervous? I'm a little nervous. Don't be silly. Zero hour camp. We got to get going here. All right. Uh, well, then, break a leg, kids, and I wish I could be there with you kids tonight. He's coming. He's coming, Ken. Right, then uh, let us to Pell-Mell. Oh, uh, if not in uh, no, if not hand in hand, yeah. then in heaven. Uh, uh, okay. All right. Are we all set here? Whoa. Now, what if we forget something? Oh, then we wing it. Oh, all great. Right. Cupboard. Architects and best friends. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, how many you got in there, Rick? Uh, 20,000. Oh, I see. I had to hold this a while. Until the next ice age, anyway. So, what do you say, buddy? Clam got your tongue? <laughs> hey, where's this special dinner and all? We still doing that? Huh? Sure, mm -hmm. nothing fancy, oh. just a good old Terre Haute dinner, the Great. kind we grew up on. Good, because I invited somebody. Is anybody in the back? Oh, wait, 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 Rick, you invited someone for when? Oh, she didn't say. We should probably just start. <laughs> I'll be back. Oh, give me strength. Who would he invite? Who knows? The printer's daughter, maybe. <laughs> well, what should we do now? Well, you've got to leave in the morning, right? Right. All right, then we just got no choice. We gotta go on. If some local shows up, then we've had it. Clam got your tongue. Huh? Rick just said clam got your tongue. <laughs> I don't think I can make it. You will, kid. Yeah? Sure, you got this stuff. All right. <sighs> Venus. Invite. <laughs> I'll get it. Uh, well, what was that? Mother's Whistler. Th thought we'd have some tea. <laughs> we eating pretty soon. I'm starved. Yeah, pretty soon. Mm. Uh, so, what was that you were singing there a minute ago? Venus in blue jeans. Ah, I see. I'm learning it on the tambourine. Want to hear? No. Uh, uh, uh. She's Venus in blue jeans. Mona Lisa with the ponytail. She's a walking, talking piece of art. She's the girl who stole my heart. That's all I know so far. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's my favorite song next to Nancy. What's Nancy? It's a comic strip. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> Well, aren't we civilized? Why, of course. We eat him pretty soon. Won't be long now. Good. Thanks. Cream? Uh, nah. Lemon? Cake. Do <laughs> <laughs> you use sugar? Sure. We were just talking about some of our favorite old songs and things. Oh, my. Sand? Huh? Sand. Sugar on the left, sand on the right. No, I'm fine right now, thank you. Memories, memories. And? Oh, yes, thank you. Just go over there. Oh, yes, those old songs take you right back. Mm -hmm. Just the other day. Oh, I'm sorry. Ah, no problem. Well, let's see here. Just get a little sugar. Uh, and you know, just a little bit of sand. 
Ah, <laughs> uh, now, what were you saying? Oh, just that I was listening to the radio the other day. Anything? Oh, what? Uh, just sand, thanks. Your tea is superb, incidentally. Is it? Mmm. Very good. Mmm, not so bad. Now, what song came on the radio? Oh, just some old rock and roll song by Rip hmm. Della How You Say and his all-girl band. Remember them? Oh, uh, Rip Della How You Say, sure. Oh, yeah, they, they don't write songs like those anymore. Uh, bum out? Bum out, yep, and dive bopping mama. I lost my baby to the great big train. Oh, sure. Yeah, great songs. Good times. Mm. Remember some of those old TV shows, Herd Busters? Oh, uh, Herd Busters. We used to listen to that on the mm. radio. Out of the west they came, six tall men on a single horse. Oh, yes. And remember, uh, Furball and Snorky? Sure, mm. with his friend Bunkhead the Clown. And Sphincter the dog, that's right. <laughs> uh, uh, boy. Yeah, that's right. Childhood in Terre Haute. Mm. No I'm kidding. Do you, I can remember every year, right after the first snowfall, my father would take his old scatter gun down off the mantle, go out into the woods and see if he couldn't bring down a plane. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, boy, some of the things. Yeah. Oh, uh, Rick, you ever go to pork dances? Oh, sure, they'd make us all go as kids. We'd have to slow dance all night long with these big slabs of meat. Mm. It was supposed to prepare us for later in life or something. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> and did you ever... Well, every year around Christmas time, our family, we'd take this, well, really it was the intestine of a sheep, you see, <laughs> and we'd stuff it full of this really spicy sausage meat. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That old sheep would get so mad. Oh, sure she would. <laughs> yeah. Got to where she'd know when Christmas was coming every year, sure. we'd find her hiding. Sure. Well, we'd go out and dig in the snow and see if we couldn't find some bananas. Oh, huh? Yeah. Oh, we had this crazy notion. We wanted to start an orchestra. La, la. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Willem. Huh? Remember old man Wormsley? No. Me neither. <laughs> Rick, hmm. boiling hot tar all over your face? No, I'm fine right now, thanks. So, Rick, yeep, 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 yeep. Tell us, uh... How does life in Terre Haute compare to what you're used to? About the same. <laughs> oh, yeah? Oh. Well. Here we go. Hey, what are we having? Oh, just our traditional appetizers, garbanzos and rusks. Mm. Mm. Oh, boy. They kind of roll around on there, don't they? <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know it's really true what they say about food. It tastes better when you catch it yourself. <laughs> At least that's what my father used to say. Well, departed father, I should say. Oh, Rick, when did he die? He didn't die, he just departed. Oh. <laughs> I still remember, because it was the day after I got my tambourine. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> Axel, what are we going to do now? Uh, something a little stronger, I think. Yeah, all right. Hmm. Boy, this is great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good old Terre Haute. Right. right. I can hardly wait till it gets winter so we can go shoot planes and stuff sheep. Axel. Uh, uh, oh, right. Yeah. Old man winter. Whew. I hope you brought your gear. Huh? Oh, you know, parkas, space heaters, mucklucks. What? Oh, don't worry. We'll get you some. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because it's going to get pretty mean out there starting, well, about now, actually. Oh, hey. Don't worry, it's just a few months of bleak, howling nothingness. Mm. There's no reason you shouldn't survive. We did. Sure, we were lucky. Yeah. Well, luckier than the others. What others? Oh, Rick. Mm. This house used to be filled with people. Yes. Gone now. Oh, they couldn't take the winter. Who couldn't? Oh, you know, uh, the old. Uh, the young. The sick. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Gee, Tansy, who do you miss the most? The sick, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Rick, you should have been there. This mm. house used to ring with the laughter of the sick. <laughs> no more. No. No more. No. What happened? Oh, the uh, starvation. Uh, marauding savages from Indianapolis. Forest beasts on the prowl. Desperate for food for their hibernating young. Are you kidding? 
Some beasts? Oh, yeah. What would you do when there was beasts coming around? Oh, uh, well, if all else failed, one of the sick would go out and offer himself up. Mm. Yeah. So, how are you feeling? Fine. Yeah? Yeah. Mm. What kind of beasts were they? Oh. Uh, coyotes? Wolverines. Mastodons? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, we get those. You do? Mastodons? Yeah. Don't they have, like, uh, real hairy palms or something? I'm not sure. Mm. Any pigs? What? Uh, pigs? Yeah. No, we're talking... Oh, that's good, because those are the ones I can't stand. Whenever I see one of those suckers, like, in a movie or something, forget it, I'm out of there, I can't take them. Oh, well, we do get some pigs, actually. Uh, there are quite a few, really. Uh, Big, giant... Mutant Oh, pigs. they'd as soon kill you as look at you, Rick. Big, hairy thing. Oh, yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. mm. Oops, kitchen timer, time yeah. for dinner. Mm. <sighs> pigs, huh? Oh, yeah. Boy, I'm hungry. Me too. I'm sure I'm ready for some chow. How about you? Yeah, I'm starving. Good. <laughs> Pigs, huh? Oh, yeah. Here we go. Hey, what are we having? Wait. Wait, Rick. First, oh. a surprise. We're gonna have some fun now. An apple core! All right! <laughs> what are we doing? Oh, we're gonna watch this baby turn brown. Yeah, you ever do this? <laughs> Why? Oh, it's just our way. Mm -hmm. Oh, so we're not eating until it turns brown? Right. Because it's your way. Right. Mm. Okay, now, right. watch the apple curl. <laughs> I think my side is turning brown a little bit. Is your side turning brown? No, no, no. No? <laughs> Come on, apple cord. <laughs> Boy, this is fun, you know. It's really neat. You know, it's better than watching chalk, that's for sure. You could watch chalk forever. It wouldn't do anything neat like turn brown. This is great. Uh -huh. Tansy, I think I hear the kitchen. Bob, yeah. sounds like the timer. Oh, yeah. Oh, we don't get to finish watching the apple cord. No. Too bad. Yeah, maybe we could do another one later. Sure. <laughs> Boy, this is the most fun I had since I got here. Excellent. Uh, Tansy. Mommy. You know what might be kind of fun while we're waiting? How would you guys like to see some mime? Tansy! <laughs> <laughs> Mm, boy, I smell my favorite. What are we having? Warm water and cottage cheese. Mm. Right. Warm water and cottage cheese. Pass me one. Here you go, Will. Warm water and cottage cheese, huh? That's right. Mm. It's so funny. What? what? This keeps happening to me. What? This is what I had for lunch. <laughs> yeah, but I could really go for some more right about now. Excellent. Uh, don't worry, wait. Wait. I think I hear something. Will, hurry, come look. Oh, damn it, I was afraid of this. It's them. They're here. Who? The pigs. <gasps> the pigs? Oh, oh, no, no. The pigs. Look at the place is crawling. There's like a couple hundred of them. Oh, my God. The what are they doing? <laughs> oh, they're gone. <laughs> now but they'll be back and next time they won't be alone <laughs> what were they doing oh squealing grunting the usual <laughs> looks like a couple of them have broken into a place already oh yeah mm -hmm. their mouths were all covered with blood and cottage cheese <laughs> i'm worried sure you're worried you're worried big and i don't blame you rick it's time you let you in on something. This is bad, real bad. See, Willem here, he was once badly bitten by one of those palookas. He doesn't talk about it much. You don't talk much when you've been pig bit. <laughs> but if we don't level with you now, you're gonna find out the hard way. 
Willem, do you want to tell him? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> Rick, you see, sometimes now, when the moon is full, Willem here. Sometimes he turns into a well. That's horrible. I know. He turns into a well? No, into a pig. Oh, I was going to say. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, but a pig. Oh, I was going to say. I never heard of anybody turning into a well. You never heard of anyone turning Yeah, but a pig, that's different. What's wrong with that girl? Oh, it's just so horrible. Poor kid. We've all had to live with this damn thing. Willem, was it wrong of me to tell him? No, no, it's, it's, it's time he knew. Oh, the shame, the shame. Christ, I, I could kill for some slop. Be strong, Willem, fight it. Yes, I must be strong. Oh, no. Oh, oh friends like, oh, oh no. But believe me, it's not gonna be pretty. There's only one way to stop this now, and you know what I'm talking about. Huh? Brace yourself, Rick. You're about to chase the little room now. Ugly, primitive, because the only way we can stop this now is with hideous pagan ritual. Hideous pagan ritual? Oh, uh, yeah, very hideous, sure. Here, take the snack. No. Oh, here, Rick, take the snack. All right, Santa, why don't you check the closet? Whatever you say. Here you go. Here's a rubber band for you. There you go. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, here. Put these on your head like this. Uh, on our... Yeah, exactly. This is your way, right? Right. 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 That's what I thought. Oh, here, will these do? Oh, uh, yeah, those are fine. Uh, do we have a live goat? No. All right, then uh, I guess we'll just have to do it now. All right, are we ready here? All right. Now, Rick, don't be frightened.
someone can explain why I TVs all over my head. Is it your way? <laughs> Don't start in with me. What's wrong, Taki? All right. I'm going to hear you say it right. I've had a very bad day, and I'm going to hear you say it right just once. Say it! What do you mean? What's wrong, Tiki? Huh? What's wrong, Tiki? Nothing's wrong. Why do they keep calling me Tiki? Oh, God damn it! God damn it! No, that's fine. Call me Tiki if it makes you feel good. It doesn't make me feel good. Then I wouldn't. Where are my pills? No, maybe you better not call me Tiki, because then that might get us mixed up with your nickname, Taki. Uh, <laughs> so you just call me whatever you want to, okay? Jesus. Jesus. What? Now, that would make me sound like I was from the Bible. Brick. Or at least on a baseball team. Brick, please. <laughs> so, so, you keep calling me Jesus, and I'll keep calling you your nickname, Taki. Taki. Tiki. Wait, wait, wait. Mr. Walgrave, why are you here? Why am I? I was supposed to come here for dinner. For dinner? Yeah, here, my secretary gave me this. Isn't this for you? There's been some kind of... I tried to call back, but all you get was your damn machine. And instead of a message on there, you know what you got? Somebody singing a song about there's something in my pocket which belongs upon my face. <laughs> You, you listen all the way through, it turns out to be a great big brownie smile. I mean, what the hell? Look, I don't know who called you, but it wasn't me. Well, who the hell was it? Surprise! You me! Oh, Rick! Oh, Jesus. Whichever. <laughs> you said it was a special occasion, so I called Taki's secretary. God damn it. I thought maybe you wanted to talk about the Regency for once. Remember the Regency? The Regency Hotel? Oh, that reminds me. What did you think of the chimney? What? What did you think of the chimney? What chimney? The one on the left. What? Did he blow a cigarette through it for you? What? Did he blow a cigarette through it for you? Did he blow a cigarette through what for me? The chimney. What chimney? The one on the left. Come on! What? <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. I come over for dinner. I step out of my car, I get pelted with cottage cheese. I come up here. I find my architect jumping around. Things on his head. Acting like some cheerleader from Mars or something. But well and good, I don't know from that. I don't want to know. What I do know is, I've now got a son who's afraid of closets. My wife. If my wife even sees a paper bag, she gets so nervous, she has to break every dish in the house. And I now have a hotel, which is one week behind schedule. I mean, Jesus, what am I supposed to do? How should I know? Whoa. <laughs> All right, that's it. I have had it. You see this? It's our contract. That's for your disappearing act. That's for your lousy design. That's for your little army buddy. And that's for your cottage cheese. Now, I'm not going to tell anybody about this because there's no way anybody would ever believe me. But I am for damn sure going to get myself another architect. Hey, wait! You want another architect? Here's my car. Oh, wait. <laughs> Here! What was the matter? I mean, I tore off the cupboard part. <laughs> Out you go! That was it. Goodbye. Look, maybe this is wrong of me, but right now I'm willing to accept the consequences. An eternity in hell, a lifetime of guilt, either one sounds just Fine. Look, I don't owe you my life, okay? That was my mistake. I thought I owed you my life. But nobody owes anybody his life, period. So here, I'm packing for you. Packing your... Your tambourine. Your brother Bob's credit cards. And what is... Your autographed picture of Bozo? Everything. Look, 
I really wish things had turned out differently. I really wish we had married each other's sisters and really hit it off and all that other MGM stuff, but that's not the way it is. So here, I'm saying goodbye. This hasn't been easy to say, but at least now you know how I feel. Were you talking to me? <laughs> Rick, don't tell me you weren't listening. I was looking at... I thought it was a pig, but I guess it was just a rock. Here, <laughs> just, just go. Just go. Wait, you mean that I should... Uh... Go out. Go away. Don't come back. Oh, you mean I should... Uh... Pick up your suitcase and leave. Oh, you mean... Uh... Before I count to three. One. Hey! I can take a hint. Willem, you don't know how long I have waited to see you do something like that. Yeah, kid, that was great. And about all that hotel business, I mean, I don't know how you feel about that. But if you ask me, that was probably the worst... Willem? Willem, are you all right? <laughs> I presume someone can tell me why I've got cheese on. <laughs> and here we are all with napkins on our heads. <laughs> oh, me. You're all right, then. Yeah. I think my hair's going to start coming in white now, but... You know what's peculiar? What? I think I must be glad I lost that job. Willem, that was the worst job you have ever had. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. How come you never said anything? Oh, I couldn't do that. You had to see it yourself. Mm, I wonder if I ever would have if all this ridiculous <laughs> lunacy hadn't happened. Maybe not. What do you know? I, I should thank Rick Stedman. Maybe I can still catch Don't up. you move. <laughs> Look, I'll take you to dinner. Oh, I can't. I've got an assignment. Oh, that's right. Uh, Pansy? Hey. Great. I'll take you to dinner, then I'll come back here, and I'll put all of my Regency stuff through the shredder. And then... Well, I guess it's back to housing to... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're waiting. You know what I could do? It's suddenly so obvious. Tomorrow morning, when Red Graham calls, I say, yes, Red Graham, I will do your housing development in Alexandria, Virginia. I take off in the morning, I set up shop, I get myself another hotel or a museum or something better, and this time it'll look, by God, the way I want it to look. And then, in between jobs or on weekends, or any time that I can get away, I'm going to drive across the river to D.C. I'm going to court Tansy till she cracks. What do you think about that? That sounds like a reasonable plan. Great. I'll get the car. Tell me some news. I think we did it, babe. Yes? I think so. I think 100%. You don't say. Yeah. Come on up. You ready down there? Almost. All right. Maybe we can get schnockered before we see this turco. What are we seeing? Ah, uh, who remembers? <sighs> hmm. The Endless Play. <laughs> the Endless Plane, in this reviewer's opinion, is plain endless. Sounds good. <laughs> You were really pushing it. One more minute of that, and I would have broke, I swear. <laughs> yeah. You know what's really hard is uh, walking in here without, you know, talking like this all the time. <laughs> I can imagine for a week. My God. Poor Rick. Yeah, I often, I often wonder what he's really like, you know? Huh? 
You know the real Rick Stedman up in Wisconsin. Hmm. Well, he's a nice fellow, probably. Probably. Well, he was nice for us, anyway. From all indications, we should find Willem and his little weather woman headed towards the Washington sunset in double harness. Mm. Not a bad guy, your friend, Willem. Mm. Not too bad. He just needed his life tampered with, that's all. Mm. And, uh, plus, uh, well, well, doesn't this settle your score with Tansy? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, isn't this, uh, that anonymous favor you're always talking about? Uh, cigar? Oh, you're not gonna tell me. Going, going. Fine, fine, fine. There you go. All right, how do I look? Hideous. Good. Let's go. Okay, hitting the old road now. <laughs> hmm. What is it, X? I was just wondering. What do you think Willem will really do when he finds out there's no such person as Red Graham? <laughs> Well, son, my guess is by that time he'll be so blamed happy he'll forget to be mad. That is my hope. This is Evanston Township High School Television, serving the ETHS community since 1956.